What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today you guys can see this big smile on my face. I'm super excited today because I'm showing you guys one of my favorite decks of all time. And the best part about this is this is really like meta relevant right now. And that is ABC, but not just any ABC. We're playing Adventure ABC. But I'm really excited for this deck because this deck is very, very relevant in today's format just because the Adventure package is super, super powerful in general, but it works so well in ABC as well. So if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I'm super excited to be bringing you guys this deck. Make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't because my subscriber like number ratio thing is pretty low. I feel like we could do a little bit better than this. But thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, onto the deck profile. Okay, so I just want to start things off by saying that I'm super excited to be showing you guys this deck just because ABC is one of my favorite decks of all time and the Adventure Engine or the Brave Engine works so well with ABC. So I'm very excited that I can be showing you guys this. This is a very legitimate deck. ABC Buster Dragon is a very powerful card. You can end on some really, really powerful boards with this. And just the inclusion of the Brave Engine means you're pretty much safe from hand traps. So to start things off with the deck profile, we are of course starting off with 3A Assault Core, 3B Buster Drake, as well as 2C Crush Wyvern. This is the perfect ratio in my opinion. C is the worst one out of the three. It's the one you don't really want to open in your hand. So that's why you're only playing 2C. And we're also playing one Union Driver. Now, people might be saying like, hey, why don't you play two just in case you draw the one? Well, two things. One, as you guys can see here, we're actually playing 43 cards. The reason I'm playing 43 is because you don't want to draw the driver. It makes it less of a chance of drawing the driver. It also makes it less of a chance of drawing Celestial and Dasher as well, which is pretty good. But so yeah, there's that. But also on top of that, with a card here like Unauthorized Reactivation, even if you do end up drawing the driver, which of course isn't the best, but even if you do end up drawing the driver, you can still use this card to equip the driver from your hand, right? And that's why the one driver is not the worst. Of course, you still don't want to draw it. I'm not saying you want to draw it, but even if you do draw it somehow, you are, there are ways to play around it. So that's really important. And next for the Adventure, the Brave Engine, of course, we're playing Triple Water Enchantress as well as one griffin this is so powerful in this deck because when i was thinking about it i was like wait none of the pieces have effects on normal summon and this deck really like notoriously because of course abc is one of those rogue decks it does lose pretty hard to some hand traps but griffin just makes you allowed to play through hand traps kind of thing because if you start off with your brave engine and you summon a griffin and then you activate union hanger and let's say your opponent has like an ash for a union hanger or something like that because sometimes your union hanger needs to go off if you don't draw a piece you need to get your union hanger off the griffin just pretty much guarantees it goes off for you which is why this engine is so so powerful and especially in abc it works so well because you're never going to have to be worried about like oh but you can't use the effect of normal summon monsters doesn't matter because you're never all, none of your normal summon have effects on summon anyways so that's why this is really really powerful of course and the best part about it is even if your opponent doesn't have a hand trap you're just putting up an extra negate with your buster anyway so this is very very powerful then we're playing triple ash one lancia and one drool now you guys might be thinking like what are these ratios okay let me explain it to you guys real quick and i actually have a very very like good explanation for why i'm playing one lancia one drool so actually i've been noticing i've been watching a lot of profiles recently for taught decks especially in today's meta and i was thinking i was like okay so let me look at these decks so i look at these decks and actually most recently, I think a week ago or something, someone came first place with Sword Soul main decking Lancia. And I was like, whoa, are people starting to main deck Lancia? So I go on Twitter and I was like, hey, are people starting to main deck Lancia? And all I get in the replies is yeses. So then I go back on YouTube and I look at a couple more profiles and surely enough, people are actually main decking Lancia in today's format. And if you guys don't know how ABC works, Lancia kills this deck. You can't summon Buster if you can't banish your pieces. So I was like, oh my God, I have to play you know, some kind of protection. So of course we're playing the Lancia. And then I noticed while I was looking through those deck profiles, the Droll and Lock is also being played in a lot of people's main decks. And I was like, Droll and Lock hurts the deck too, because if I go Union Hanger, search my B, when I summon my B, if they Droll and Lock me, I can't activate the B effect when it hits the grave. So I was like, nope, we gotta play some protection. So we are playing one Droll and one Lancia. Of course, as you guys can see, we are playing Cross Out here as well. So you do wanna be able to protect your cards. And of course, with Cross Out, you can also protect from stuff like Ash, stuff like Imperm as well. So Cross Out just gives you a lot of protection, and that's why we're playing the one and the one. And of course, the best part about playing one and one hand trap is that let's say your opponent doesn't have a Lancia, it doesn't use it against you. A lot of the times in today's meta, Lancia is pretty powerful. So if you just draw your Lancia, you're just drawing an extra hand trap. So it's actually not that bad, right? Same thing with the Droll. If you draw a Droll, 
There's nothing wrong with drawing a draw. It's, it's a hand trap. It's, it's good for you, right? So that's why I really like these ratios, just the one on one. Of course, triple ash, though. Ash is the most important hand trap for you because it hits everything generically. But yeah, these are more for protection. But again, you can also use it for yourself if you draw into them, right? Which is very powerful. Then, of course, we are playing the DPE engine. This deck always can make Link 2s super, super easily. And actually, the best part about making the Link 2 here is because it gets your pieces in the graveyard, and you get to summon your Buster, and you can always make your Verte. So that's why you have Destiny here, Celestial, as well as Dasher, and of course, Double Fusion Destiny. Now, there is a play in this deck, and if you guys have watched my ABC profiles in the past, there's a play in this deck where I really like to end on IP plus Buster, because when you end on IP plus Buster, essentially what you can do is you can use one of your opponent's monsters to make Underworld Goddess, and it kind of breaks your opponent's boards. So the best part is if you draw your Fusion Destiny, you can actually end on IP plus Buster, activate the Fusion Destiny, end on DPE, and then on your opponent's turn, use the Buster, tag out, summon your three pieces. After you summon your three pieces, you can use your IP plus your three pieces, plus like a monster your opponent controls to make your Underworld Goddess. And then now you've broken your opponent's board. You're going to get a ton of advantage from the pieces because they were just sent to the graveyard again. So you get to search, you get to add, etc., etc., And then you broke your opponent's board. So that's why obviously Fusion Destiny in this package in general is just really, really powerful in ABC. And then of course, we're going to round off the adventure package here with three right of armesia one journey of destiny and one draco back now actually i've seen some people cut draco back in, especially in like the abc builds and whatnot i actually really like draco back because for two reasons one because buster requires you to discard something for its effect so being able to discard the draco back and then it just pretty much putting itself on the token afterwards is very very powerful so that's why i do like the draco back no matter what it's pretty much just a free discard for you and you never lose this card so of course yeah we are playing the one draco back and then of course we're playing triple unit hanger and terraforming abc stuff we're playing triple pot of prosperity now if you guys are watching this first of all i want to say that this deck is not very budget just because the adventure package is pretty expensive on its own but for some reason if you guys do end up having the adventure package for other reasons and you guys want to try this deck but you don't have the budget for prosperity you can cut prosperity prosperity is not that important in the deck where you have to be playing it I just like playing it as an extra like you know draw engine if i don't end up like you know opening a great hand now you guys can cut this don't worry if you guys don't have access to this you guys can cut it you guys can put another card more budget cards in here as well i mean you can always play more extender stuff like monster reborn you can also play more trap cards because you do want to go first and setting up more traps is never a bad thing so whatever you guys want to do i just want to give you guys that option because i know prosperity is kind of an expensive card i know the adventure package is expensive in general as well but I know the adventure package can be played in multiple decks. So I know some people would like to invest in the adventure package just because they're like, I can play it in this and I can play it in that. And they don't have prosperity. So yeah, so just wanted to give you guys that option. Prosperity is a really good card, of course, as a draw card, but it's not necessarily needed in this deck. Then we are playing triple unauthorized reactivation. Like I said, it's pretty much your sixth copy of Union Hanger. So like four five and six. Actually, you could argue seven because terraforming. But yeah, these are extra copies of Union Hanger. If you don't open your Union Hanger, this card does a trick for you. And again, it gets Union Driver out of your hand if you do draw the Union Driver. So that's why this card is very, very powerful as well. Then of course, one call by the grave as well as two cross out designator. Like I said, you do have to play a little bit defense but that's fine because if you guarantee a situation where your combos are going to go off there's no way you're losing the game now i will say this though if you do open a cross out and your opponent has no hand traps lets everything go through keep in mind worst case scenario cross out can just be used as discard fodder for your buster dragon right so that's why cross out is still a really really good card and then triple infinite impermanence of course sword soul is still a really really viable deck and one of the best decks in the format so imperm of course is very powerful against sword soul in general so that's it for the main deck 43 cards like i said in the main deck again 43 just because you don't want to draw the dash of the celestial as well as the union driver it makes it less of a chance of drawing them i always like to play more than 40 cards in abc that's just me right but yeah this is why i think the main deck here actually is really really perfect moving on to the extra deck here we are playing of course triple abc buster dragon now to be honest i usually banish one of them off prosperity anyways you'll never really make the third one you always usually just make two by by the time you're making the second one you're winning the game but yeah there you are still playing three of course just in case you need it one dpe of course one dweller as well as one tornado dragon you can play any rank fours honestly these are just more toolbox i just like to play one-on-one -on -one just for some back row removal and then for some graveyard hate you know like that but this deck can make rank fours pretty easily of course with your pieces so yeah you can play any really just toolbox stuff here then we're playing one underworld goddess like i mentioned this card is insanely insanely powerful one access code this deck can make access code and otk super super easily you can play boral sword here as well if access code is like too much out of your budget you guys can play boral sword it's not like it's the same thing really because this deck 
that can put up three to four pieces easily on the board every single time. So, uh, yeah, if you guys don't have access code, you guys can play Boral Sword as well. I know that's a little bit more budget. Then you are playing one Apollo, one Unicorn, one Cerberus, one Phoenix. Again, just more toolbox stuff here. One Platinum Gadget, one IP. Like I said, IP with Buster is a really, really powerful combo. So that's why you need to be playing the IP. And then, of course, one Verte Anaconda, because if you don't end up drawing your Fusion Destiny, then it's fine. Then you can just make the Verte and make the DPE that way. So the extra deck, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. It's really just the main cards you need, which is Buster, DPE, Verte, IP. And then I guess you could argue the access code and the underworld goddess. And then the rest is just toolbox stuff, to be honest with you. So that's it for the deck. I really like this deck. I think you guys should try it out yourself. It's one of my favorite decks of all time. And to see it be able to be like meta relevant just because of this brave and this adventure package, like I'm very excited for it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Brave ABC in today's format. It's very consistent. And again, with stuff like Crossout and whatnot, it's always going to go off. Your combos are pretty much always going to be guaranteed. You have so much protection and you have so much offensive capability as well. This is like the perfect mid-range deck and it's super, super fun to play. And that's really just my favorite part about this. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Again, the goal for 2022 is 10,000. I know it's kind of a big goal, but I I feel like we can make it happen. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.